gas and fluid and infection built up in his abdomen. And I uh, want y'all to pray he's in the UT hospital. And for a few weeks of God be praying for him, especially tonight and in the morning. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Do you hope in the message in your heart? You got it, brother. You sure you're not holding one? You ain't going to hold out on the side. No. <laughs> talk about saying their prayers, they talk about prayer, and I've heard a lot of teachings on prayer, and I'm going to look just for a little while on what prayer is, actually what prayer is. Everybody here has just about, I'd say everybody here, do you have one of these? Turn them down. That way you don't be interrupted here. This is the but on these things right here, you're able to go to all over the world. At your fingertips, you have you have great resources. It's amazing what man's technology has come up with. The friend they had to begin to scratch the very first surface of what prayer is. Amen. And you can call somebody around the world on this, but you can't call heaven on this. No. Nope. You can't call heaven on this. I'm not promoting cell phones. I'm sure they have their blessings and curses. Amen. Sure. But I tell you what, I am promoting prayer this, this evening because prayer changes things. Each one of you are here tonight because somebody prayed for Amen. you. Amen. I bet there was a mama, a papa, a mama, a daddy, somebody, a next door neighbor that bowed the knee and bowed their soul unto the most holy God and prayed for you. I know that's what happened for me. I've told you all my testimony, how that I was one of the kids that they in my neighborhood that they figured would end up dead or in the penitentiary. That's the way, that's where I was headed. My dad was an alcoholic, my mom was an alcoholic. I was uh, it was nothing for them to for the whole neighborhood to get around and hear us get the whippings and beatings and, and see the fight and the law. <coughs> and that's the kind of home I was raised in. I was always up there. They were shooting and stabbings. And, and uh, I didn't come from a, a... But my dad did do the best he could do for me. And my mom did. And they loved me. I mean, they'd fight a circle saw for you. 
but they didn't tell me about Jesus. But see, that didn't limit me because I had neighbors that seen me and they had compassion on me and they cared for my soul and they prayed for me. And I didn't know it, but there was three ladies in that community that brought me before the throne every Thursday evening or afternoon. They had tea, coffee, and Bible study. And me and some of the boys in my neighborhood, they would bow down and bring us before God. Now, I'm sure that some of the other neighbors that probably knew what they were doing, and you know how Bible studies go. Sometimes you get sisters and brothers to come to it, and sometimes you don't. And many of them will think, well, there's nothing to this prayer. There's nothing to prayer, but I want you to know I'm here today because somebody prayed for me. Somebody prayed for me. And uh, Jerry, here's your batteries. I didn't remember that. I forgot my Bible, but I remember your batteries. <laughs> See, man, I, I wanted to know it's not my sister. Amen. I'm not saying that at all. But they're up here somewhere. Let me read the scripture. In Matthew chapter 7, the Bible said this. He said in verse 7, The Lord said, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread will give him a stone? Or if he asks fish will give him a serpent? And Jesus is appealing to your, to your compassion that you have and your love and your heart. It's what he's, he, he, he's reaching up for these things. And he said, if then... If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask Him? Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Father, I ask you, Lord, to bless the reading of your word. God, I'm standing here not knowing from one second to the next what you have for us, but I pray, God, that you would sit a bounty before your people. God, give us something that we can carry out here and incorporate and, and do, use in our life. And, Lord, that would help us to be drawn closer to you. Father, I pray if there's any here that don't know you, that this would be the good hour of salvation. I pray, Father, Lord, that you have your will, that Christ, we may make much of Jesus, and, Lord, that we may decrease ourselves. We give praise to you in Jesus' name, I ask you. Amen. You can be seated. I guess if I were to name this or title this, it'd be on prayer. What is prayer? And uh, it's asking and receiving of the things of God. It's a rare privilege to pray because it brings us in close fellowship with God. Admitting your need for Him and your dependence that you have upon God. Jesus said this, without me you can do nothing. If we really believe that, we pray. But you know what it is? We think we can do quite a bit without Him. Because we learn how to go in and come out under our own power. We learn how to operate and take off and get up early and not pray and get up early and go and rush and hurry. We take time out for the flesh to pamper it and clean it and Make it up and uh, comb it up and uh, dress it up. And yet the in ma inward man we leave exposed to the elements of the prince and the power of the air. The Lord Jesus said this. He said, ask and it shall be given you. Wonder what we would ask of God right now. If God were to, to ask you, here I want you to step into this booth. I want you to step into a booth and ask God anything you want. Some people would say, Lord, I want a better car. Some would say, Lord, I want more money. Some would say, Lord, I want better this and better that. I wonder how many would say, God, make me useful for your kingdom. God, help me to be a better child. God, help me to be a better Christian. God, help me to put on Christ. And it's amazing how that our thought pattern is and how our hearts are. You know, I know people that's told me, they said, well, preacher, I know my heart. Well, the thing of it is, you don't know your heart. I don't know my heart. I know this about my heart. It's desperately wicked. I can't believe you'd say that, preacher. That's what God said. Jeremiah 
Jeremiah 17, God said, the heart is desperately wicked above all. He said, who could know it? He said, I try the reins of the heart. I know it. You know how I know my heart's desperately wicked? Because I know what it's fixed on. You know how I know that our hearts are desperately wicked? Because Jesus said, where your treasure is, there we heart be also. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Listen, I've seen people say, oh, I love Jesus, I love Jesus, but that's not what they're speaking about, and that's not what they're seeking about, and that's not what they're all about, amen? I know people that, if they love the Lord as much as they love football, they'd be a fireball for Jesus. Amen. I know people that they love the Lord as much as they love the Walmart, they'd be in church all the time. I know people that, if they love the Lord as much as they love, and you can put your own little thing on because everybody's gone. Yep. How about this? And I guess it will hit us all. If they love the Lord more than they love money. It ain't funny when Jesus said man cannot serve God and mammon. 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 You know what that? Somebody tell me what mammon is. Money. Filthy lucre. Amen. Right. Man, you got to have it to live. I know. I mean. And it's what it seems to be what makes the world go round. But friend, that's just what you can see. Yeah. What makes the world go round is the will of God. Amen. Amen. What makes things, what gives you the very life and breath that you're breathing right now. The Bible said in Acts 17, I believe it is, for in Him we live and move and we have our being. In Him, in Christ, that we have everything. Mm -hmm. Jesus tells us, He said, ask and it shall be given you. Let me ask you, what have you asked of God lately? Have you really prayed? Or do we say, Lord bless this, Lord bless that, Lord bless God, bless this, bless that, bless this, bless that, bless this, bless that. And we just sort of wholesale prayer and we, ain't get, we don't get up looking for these things. We don't get up with expectation of these things. And it's called prayer. And it's not prayer. The Lord told us, He told us, thank you. Jesus said in, in Luke 18 and 1, He said, and He spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Right. I, I think this is the right scripture. In verse 9 of Luke 18, Jesus said, and He spake a parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one was a Pharisee. <coughs> that man, he was a doctor of the law. He understood the law. He knew what God required according to law. Being a Pharisee, the bad thing about being a Pharisee is that trying to be justified by the works of the flesh and thinking that you're something that somebody else isn't. When I tell you, church, that I'm a sinner saved by the grace of God, I'm not saying that to be humble. I'm saying it because I'm a sinner saved by the grace of God. <laughs> I'm not trying to be spiritual or humble. I'm saying my righteousness that I trust and I look to is not based on my performance. And I try to perform for the Lord and I try to, I try to live right. And I try to press for the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. But that's not, that's not what makes me who I am. My righteousness is imputed. It's been imputed into me. Daryl preached on it last Sunday, Wednesday night. <coughs> when he preached on the righteousness of God. Amen. And he was bringing out what true righteousness is. It's that which God had given in a substitutionary death in Jesus Christ to provide for us. But the Lord said that the one was a Pharisee. He was a, a teacher, if you will, of the law. You could call him a Baptist. See, Baptists know how to go in and come out, don't we? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. You know the kind of sins that's acceptable and not acceptable mm -hmm. in the Baptist church. And you know people that say certain things are sin, certain things ain't sin. Listen, sin is sin. That's right. Amen. Amen. I had a guy tell me, eating sugar is sin. I said, it's not a sin to me. He said, well, if you eat sugar, it'll destroy your body. I said, buddy, if sugar's all I got to worry about, man, I'm doing good. <laughs> Amen. Amen. One
one person said, caffeine is bad for your body. Well, these things may be if you sit and drink it all day long and you're pumping pots through you. But I don't feel convicted for drinking a cup of coffee. I don't feel convicted of that. I got deeper things that I worry about. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> about righteousness and, and faith and, Amen. And, and faithfulness to God. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we know some things that are acceptable. We know if we see somebody that looks bad and maybe smells bad and maybe has had sin work in their life to, to, to the point where they're kind of derelict, that we feel pretty good about ourselves. Unless God should have made better choices. I've seen that kind of attitude towards mm -hmm. him. Listen, but by grace it be reversed. That's right. Amen. That's right. But by grace. That's, That's true. true. I see people on the on the streets, walking the streets all the time, and I'm not far from there as far as that goes. Not financially. I have family I could probably stay with until they until they got fed up with me. <laughs> you know, and, and hopefully we do, but and hopefully it won't come to that, but you don't know what's gonna happen. Let me tell you something. We live most people live in a bubble and they got an unreal view of how things are in the present. And they think, oh, we live in America and everything's blessed. And we are blessed in America. And we have privileges here that nobody else has in the world. We are a, a people that's going to be accountable to God. Amen. We're going to be accountable for our waste. <coughs> We're going to be accountable for many things. That's true. There's people that's prisoned, in prison because they carry the Bible. What you did today, they carry the Bible in. They, and you come to read it and study it and hear it preached, and that's all they did. And they're locked up. And it's not obscure, it goes on everywhere. You don't hear about it in the national news, but it's out there. Thanks to Fox, you hear about some of the things that goes on. And the BBC, the British Broadcasting thing, you hear some of the things that go on. But there's a lot of things that's going on, church, that you're not aware of. That's right. That's right. I listened to Dr. Jack Van Impey this morning, and he said, listen, <coughs> all China would have to do is bust one of those magnetic, uh, some kind of magnetic wavelength bomb that could go off and shut the grids down, the power down, where you had no electricity. Let me tell you about having no electricity. It'll change your life mm -hmm. instantly. I live out in the country, and this summer, my power went out, the breaker broke, the air conditioner broke. Buddy, you go from having AC to having sitting in your short pants, sweat dripping off of you. And then in the cold, if you don't have electric, <laughs> you better have a kerosene heater. And you better have kerosene or a wood stove or something. And then if the gas goes down, you better have some way to feed yourself. And you say, well, preacher, what are you saying? What I'm saying is most people live in an unreal view of how things really are and how things can really change that quick. False sense of security. That's it. My security is not in my bank book. My security is not in my ability to duke it out with somebody. My security is not in my craftiness. My security is in God. Amen. Amen. I'm looking unto Him as the author and the finisher of my faith. And listen, the Lord said two men went to the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and he prayed thus with himself. And here's what I want to get to. He prayed with himself. And I, you say, what does that mean? It means he's not talking to God. He's talking to the audience. He prayed thus with himself, Well, God, I thank thee that I'm not as other men. Well, I fast twice, and he's telling God his resume. He bragged a moment. God, I thank you I'm not like other men. I have thanked God that he delivered me from alcohol. I have thanked God that he delivered me from the things that he's delivered me from. And it's by his grace that I am delivered. And I am delivered. And man, it's by His grace. I mean, it's by His grace, not by my works. It's by 
by his grace. The Pharisee said, he said, I'm not as other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this public. You ever judge somebody? Man, I can't understand why they got so much and they won't do this with it and they won't do that with it. And then we got something that we can do something with, but we don't. We don't want to talk about that, do we? That's right, bro. Maybe you got that talent you hiding under a bushel. Or you got that gift that you're <coughs> hiding under a bushel. Or you got that ability that you're hiding under a bushel. Or you say, somebody will do it. And somebody says, anybody can do it. And anybody <coughs> says, well, let nobody do it. And that's who ends up doing it, is nobody. Our Lord told us, he said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. And friend, people are getting just what they're asking for. Nothing. And they're getting just what they seek for. I remember telling a preacher one time as a young evangelist, I said, I wish I had the Bible knowledge you have. He said, well, brother, I, let me tell you how to get it. He said, you put your nose in this book and you read. And you would pray and ask God to help you hide it in your heart. Do like David said, Lord, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And he said, God wants you to know it more than you want to know it. He said, you can know it better than I know it. All you got to do is just read it. He said, you won't get it by sleeping on it. You won't get it by riding it around in your car. You won't get it by having a dashboard Bible. You won't get it by sitting it in the back window. You won't get it by sitting it as an ornament on the table. He said, you'll only get it if you open the pages. That's right. 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 A Bible falling apart, I read, reveals a life that's not. Amen. I'll let you study on that. But this man prayed with himself. And that's what we do a lot of times. We pray with ourselves. You know, it's like we used to do a survey here in Sunday school. How many daily Bible readers? Yep, I read G, uh, John 11, 35. Anybody know what that is? One verse. Jesus well. And they would read that. Jesus will. I'm a daily Bible reader. Just so they could say there's a daily Bible reader. Some people would say there's a daily Bible reader and they ain't read it in a week or longer. Amen. Last time they read it was in Sunday school or church when the preacher had them turn to a certain place. But they want to be included in the daily Bible readers. And a lot of times we want to be included in the prayer warriors. And we want to be included in those. But listen, prayer is asking and receiving. And it's asking with pure faith in God, that God is able. Not that you're worthy, not that you can pray a certain way, but friend, ask them with an expectation. I can tell my grandchild this, and this is the kind of expectation you need to look for. I can say, honey, I'm going to come pick you up at such and such time. Let me tell you, before time there, she starts looking for Papa. Or he starts looking for Papa. Because he knows Papa loves him, and he know, and she knows Papa loves her, and she knows that I'm going to do my dead level best to meet that need and to be there. And she's ready to go. The Lord said that we are to, to be ready to travel. Have your lamps trimmed and, and burning, and have your feet shot. Have your feet ready for travel. In other words, church, be ready to go. Be prayed up, fed up, ready to go. When I pull up to the house, I don't have to come looking for them. They've been looking for me. Because they, with expectation, expected me to do what they asked. And they know I love them. And they know as unless some kind of thing, bad thing happens, I'm going to do my best to do it. You don't have to worry about no bad thing happening to God. Amen. Amen. It's not Amen. about prayer. Amen. And so you ought to look for it. You know why most people don't have any confidence in their prayer? Because they don't, they, they don't get no prayers answered. They pray. They say, say the words. Just saying, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, that don't mean diddly squat. And if all you're doing is parakeeting some words that you've memorized, now lay me down to sleep, pray the Lord, so to keep thy die for a week. You're not praying, church. Prayer is asking of God and with anticipation expecting an answer and with great, <laughs> great desire looking for God to answer. Amen. Amen. Right after I got 
saved. I knew I seen it right off. I need a wife. I said, God, I ain't gonna make this without a wife. I need a wife. I, and I, I, I did. And I I read in there about prayer. I said, ask. And I said, Lord, I need a wife. And I tell people, pray God that I'd get a wife. They say, what kind of wife do you want? And I thought, no. Mm, better make this right, you know. And I said, pray God give me a wife that will love him so she can love me. And that's what I prayed for. That God would give me a wife that would love him so she could love me right. I guess all of us have been loved wrong. And all of us have probably loved others wrong at some time. But he answered my prayer. Now you say, what'd you do? When I went to the grocery store, I said, boy, is she in here. When I went to the laundry man, I said, boy, is she in here. And when I, uh, when I went to church, I'd say, Lord, is she in here? Because I was expecting God to reveal her to me when he did it. And you know what? He did. See, that's what I said. I said, okay. Amen. That's right. The same day I met her, I said, I'm going to marry you. She said, you are crazy. I said, she said, you're nuts. I said, I may be nuts, but I'm screwed on the right boat. The same day I met her, I hadn't even went out with her. We just sitting out in the car in Judy's driveway. And I said, uh, and I was reluctant about even coming to meet her because Angel was not in church and she's saying, oh, you got to come meet this girl. And I thought, I don't know if I want to meet anybody you're running around with. You know? Amen. I was reluctant about it. And God said, well, you asked. And I said, all right. So I go meet. And, and when I got there, I told her, I said, I'm going to marry you. She said, you're crazy. You're nuts. I said, I may be nuts, but I'm screwed on the right boat. I've been looking for you. And she said, oh, God. She got out of the car pretty quick. And I said, you want to go out with me? She said, I don't know. I said, well, uh, when can we go out? And and I, I started asking if she was going to a Christian camp. And that was the longest two weeks or a week, whatever it was. And I, I with great anticipation, waited. And I mean, I just knew. Whenever I was looking for a church and I had turned pastorship down from a church because God said, that ain't the church. You're not supposed to pastor this. If you do it, you'll be doing it in the flesh and there'll be no good thing come out of it. <coughs> now, that ain't the prayer I wanted to hear. I wanted to be spiritual and say, brother, I'm going to pray about it. And I did. I really did pray. I said, God, please, Lord, show me what you want me to do. He said, okay, I don't want you to pastor this church. Uh, what? What? Man, I can be ordained, I can be licensed, and I can be pastor all to, like, within a week. He said, you'll do it on your own. And I said, show me this is you, not the devil lying to me. And boy, he did. My house fell apart. Me and Patsy got in the worst argument we'd ever been in. I don't even, to this day, know what it was about. She was gone. And I was sitting in the house by myself, and I said, man, you ever had something bad happen like that and you're thinking, what happened? <laughs> yeah. I, I, how did this just happen? I mean, it was boom, boom, boom and gone. Yeah. And then God said, well, is that good enough? I said, okay, Lord. I went and called the pulpit committee. I told them, I said, hey, I said, I can't be your pastor. I can't even come back over there and preach. <laughs> they said, why? And I said, it's nothing to do with you. It has something to do with me. And uh, it's not a bad thing, just God got something different. And he's, I can't even come back there. And I give them every, I went, they met with me, I give them all of their credentials back of everything that they give me. And, uh, and Patsy made it back home the next day. Me and her talked, she said, I don't know why I got some names left. And I said, I do. <laughs> I do. You see, <coughs> God will answer real prayer. When you really pray, we tell people, I'll pray for you, brother. And your prayer may be, bless <coughs> brother Jeff and bless Richard. Well, how do you want him blessed? Do you want him blessed with a head of hair? Do you want him blessed with, how do you know if God even does it? You're not asking for anything specific and you're not definitely not looking for anything to happen. So how are you going to know if God even answers your prayer? Well, God answers prayer. No is our answer sometimes. Yeah. You ever got a no? Yep. Don't pray for me 
that way. If you can't pray, really pray for me. Don't waste your time. <laughs> Don't give me false hope. If you're going to pray for me, pray for something specific for Amen. me. That when it happens, you can lift up holy hands and glorify God. That God answered prayer. Amen. You know why some people won't pray? Because they don't think God answers prayer. That's right. You know why they think God don't answer prayer? Because they don't ask specific things and they don't with anticipation believe God and wait for God and to see God move. Hey man, there's nothing like a superficial relationship to destroy your confidence in prayer. But if you have real believing faith, and you know that God saved your soul and wrote your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you know that you passed from death into life. You know that you can bring your baby to God. And you can say, God, it's my child. And Lord, their mind is gone. God, I pray that you would just deliver them from the, from the snares yes. of Satan. Yes. And God, please, and you can bring that child before the throne of God and you can pour your soul out to God and God will move in your behalf. That's God, true. listen, if you've got a bad job and you want a job, you can say, Lord, I need a job, God, I need. I need to be able to pay my bills. That's not a bad thing to ask for God, to be, to be able to work and earn a living. God said, a man, don't work, you need. There's nothing wrong in that. And you ought to ask God and you ought to be listening and looking and hastening to His answer. Amen. Because you asked Him. If you come to me, if you walk, if I walk up to Jeff and I say, hey brother, will you loan me $10? And Jeff goes, <laughs> I'm not going to expect no answer from that. He didn't give me an audience. <coughs> but if you got audience with God and He said Hebrews 4, and 16, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And if you have an audience with God and if you're saved, you can, you're invited. <coughs> and if you'll go there in full assurance of faith, yes, thank you, God, I am coming, I'm taking you up on it, Lord. And this is my need and spread it out before yes, it. Lord. It's okay to ask for a maid. It's okay to ask for work. It's okay to ask for anything. God knows you anyway. Yes, I've asked for things before that God said, that's you're wrong in your heart for asking for that. I said, well, Lord, what should I ask for to ask it right? Because yes. there were some things that needed change. And I didn't know. I thought that would change it. You don't want to ask God to sign His name to something that He's against. But if you, within full effect, listen, you can bring anything to God. Thank he knows Jesus. everything you think. He knows everywhere you go. He knows He knows the most vile thing there is about us. Yes, he has. And He loves us. Thank you. And He loves us. He loves you. I mean, that blows my mind that God loves us. But... This Pharisee began to give his resume to God and he said, and he's a pretty good dude, man. I mean, if he, he stood and he prayed with himself, that was bad. But he said, God, I thank thee I'm not as other man, but this is true what he said. Extortioners, he said, I'm not an extortioner, I'm not unjust, I'm not an adulterer. Or even as this publican, he wasn't a tax collector. He said, I fast twice in a week. Man, as far as outward righteousness goes, he's probably better than most Baptists. Amen. That's right. You fast twice a week, do you? I can't fast, preacher. I got stomach trouble. I can't fast, preacher, because you don't pay the sacrifice. Amen, preacher. Amen. That's what it really is. Yeah. Well, I'll get sick. Jesus got sick for you, didn't he? Yes, he did. Thank you. By his stripes, we're healed. Yes. Mm -hmm. This kind of preaching wouldn't be done in First Baptist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. He said, I give tithes of all I possess. He was a tither. Some Baptists aren't tithers. 
Some Baptists, they steal from God all the time. The Bible said the tithe is mine. The Lord said the tithe is mine. He said, bring you the tithes to the storehouse. Some people take their tithes and say, I'm going to give my tithe to Jenny. I'm going to give my tithe to Mary Lou. I'm going to give my tithe to this. And I, I'm going to give God the crumbs. Because I can, you know, after all, they're mine. No, they're his. The same one that gave you the job and gave you the payday can take every bit of that away with one fell swoop. That's right. And say, how do you like being broke? And then we say, oh, God, I'll time, Lord. I'll give more. I'll give 12%, Lord. <laughs> the publican standing afar off, he would not as so much as lift up his eyes unto heaven, and he smote his upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to the sinner. Jesus said, I tell you, this man went down into his house justified rather than the other. Now, if you be real with God, He's not saying just, just admit it. You've got to confess it and forsake it. You'll have mercy only after you forsake it. There's a lot of people who say, yeah, I'm rotten to the core. I ain't going to change. God can't give you grace in that. <laughs> but if you say, yeah, this is what's going on and it's wrong, and i got to get it right. God will give you grace for that. Amen. He'll give you power. As many as received Him, to them gives He, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. And the publican standing afar off would not so much as lift up his eyes into heaven. But smote his breast, saying, be, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. He said, I tell you, this man went to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalts himself shall be abased, <laughs> and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Mm -hmm. Prayer puts you in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. You come to the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, hitherto you've asked nothing in my name. When I come to the Father, I come in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I come before your throne in Jesus' name. God, I just tell him. You say, what do you do? I tell him everything. This is, this is how it is. This is how I feel. Yes. Don't go to God if you feel one way and you're reluctant even about telling it. And some don't. I go to God and I tell him exactly. <coughs> what can you hide from God? Day and night's the same. Nothing. That's right. He knows it all. I remember I caught my son smoking. And uh, I said, go out and get them cigarettes, boy. I said, he said, I ain't smoking, Daddy, I swear. I said, boy, I saw you. Go get the cigarettes. I didn't smoke nothing, Daddy, I swear I didn't. I said, Marlboro's under the house. Go get them now. <laughs> he said, Daddy, I swear I didn't. I said, well, you get me a beating. Not for smoking, but for lying. I said, I ain't going to tolerate lying. I said, you're going to pick me a big old switch. I don't want you to come back no little thing either. And he got his back with some big wad of switches. And he said, I swear I wasn't smoking. I said, you were smoking. I said, if you don't go get them cigarettes, I'm going to beat you to death until you go get them. So you can either go bleeding or you can go get them right now. God. He came back and he said, I'm sorry, Daddy, for smoking. I said, I'm sorry you're smoking, but that's not what I'm upset about. I said, I'm upset about the lie. And I said, you're going to be punished for the lie. He said, can't you give me mercy? <laughs> yes. I never will forget it. I don't wear short pants. If you ever saw me in short pants, you would know why. I look like a riding a chicken. But I had a short pair of pants and we was at our house. And I said, boy, I'm going to give you mercy this time, but somebody's got to take your punishment. And I said, I want you to watch this. And I sit him over there and I took those switches from his hands and I beat my legs to death. And I said, I took the punishment for you. That's what Jesus Christ did for all of us. He looked at me like I had lost my mind. He did, sister. That's 
what blew my mind. Or he said he did. I figured, man, I, I waited 15 years, couldn't wait to ask him about that. I said, you remember when you got caught smoking? Yeah. I said, you remember me beating a fart out of my stuff? No. You don't remember that. You made me want to give me a lot of switches. He was probably shocked. But I'll tell you what. It was, uh, it, it, it was I, I remember it because he said, can't you give me mercy? You ever went to God and said, God, I know I knew, I know I knew better. God, I know. I know I deserve. I know I deserve judgment, God. I'm guilty. But God, I knew better. But anyway, Lord, will you give me mercy and deliverance, not just forgiveness, but a deliverance. And friend, God will deliver those. If you'll be real with God, God will be real with you. He'll help you. You can become spiritual again. You can have the joy of salvation again. You can have power and joy unspeakable. The Bible said the joy of the Lord is your strength. And you can have power with God. Amen. I'm out of soap. I'm going to quit washing. I've probably been, been long-winded tonight. What time? Yeah, not too bad. If you want to be justified between you and God, ask for specific things. Tell God the truth. Tell Him how it really is in your life. I come to God the other day and I said, Lord, I'm just tired. I'm just physically tired. And I said, I, I feel weak and tired, God. I just asked you to help me. Will. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What do you say in Hebrews 11 and 6? But without faith it is impossible to please God, for he that cometh unto God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder. That he is a rewarder. That he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Diligently means you do it with purpose, and you do it seriously. And you don't nonchalantly say, now I landed down to sleep. Pray, bless me, bless this, bless me, blah, 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 blah. That's not prayer. And you might offer that. Offer it to your boss and see if he'd be satisfied with that kind of stuff. Go to your boss and say, yeah, I did everything. I did my chores and I, I, I went through my routine. And I bet you that don't float. We bring the the maimed and the leftovers, the dregs of our life to God and say, there it is, Lord. Be happy. Offer that kind of stuff to your boss and see what they think about it. They won't take it. They'll find somebody who can give them 100%. That's right. God deserves nothing less. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Father, I, I pray, God, that maybe something was said tonight would help us. Lord, that would help us to, to draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, asking specific things. And God, knowing that you're able to do all things, there's nothing too hard for you. I can't bring anything that's big in your sight for all things that are small to you. Lord, you've made everything that we can see and things that are unseen. You do more for us than we can do for ourselves. Father, I pray, God, that we can have our hearts fixed on you. God, our thank you, the mind of Christ, that we can let this mind be in us, which is also in Christ Jesus. Help us, God, to, to through childlike faith and through great, great expectation, pray and expect and to look for the answer. And God, I know that every time we do, it will increase our faith. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've ever had a prayer answered, ever had one prayer answer if you some people have because they've never prayed other than for salvation but if you've ever had a prayer really I mean that God answered what you ought to know is I, there's been times I've brought stuff to God that I've never told my wife was aware of it Nobody else. I didn't tell another soul. Of the I 
was thinking, man, I might have to sell my guitars, my guns. I may have to sell this. I may have to sell that. And I, I don't have anything I can't let go of other than my Bible as far as worldly possessions. <coughs> I can't sell my rings. That don't mean nothing to me. I've already sold most of them. <coughs> There's been times... Paul said, I know how to <coughs> base and I know how to abandon. He said, I know how to have a lot and I know how to have a little. He said, in all things, I've learned to be content. Mm -hmm. Amen. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Amen. He said, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consists of not the abundance of the things he possesses. Mm -hmm. You're not taking anything out of here with you. Mm -hmm. If I go tonight, I'll go out of here. They'll <coughs> dress me. Somebody else will dress me with a suit that has no back, or they'll burn me, or they'll do whatever they do to my flesh. I don't care what they do to it. Because be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. But one thing I will tell you, <coughs> I have no use for anything else here. And I wouldn't come back for it. I, I really wouldn't. I made it right up to the edge of death. I thought I would already be there. I told Pam, she asked me to build her a little garage on her, on her, uh, at, on her property. She was wanting to know about the contract that night. I said, Sister, I probably won't be alive by Monday. I was a very sick man. Yeah. I was so sick I couldn't raise up on my own strength. I had to pull on stuff. I could take my hands and do like that, pour water in it, and it would stay sunk in and hold water. Mm -hmm. And that's a pretty bad shape. My color was gray, mm -hmm. and I was a sick man, and I was pushing myself. Mm -hmm. I was determined. That if God was going to take me, he'd take me like this. And I asked him that very thing. I said, Lord, if you're going to take me, take me in action. Take me in service. Take me moving. Don't let me lay and waste away. And that's what I prayed. And I told her, she said, will you next week build me a, a garage? I said, sister, I probably won't be here next week. I think I'm going home. Maybe tonight. that close. She said, Brother, you're not going anywhere. God's going to give you a liver, and He's giving it to you tonight. You wait and see. And that kind of threw me back. And I said, Well, I know God's able to, but honestly, I wasn't looking for Him to do that. I really wasn't. I'd already made my peace, and I have accepted that I was getting ready to cross over. I've been fighting this fight for a long time. I got home, 